Hello, My Little Comic Book Ponies! I'm Critical Analysis, and I just finished reading My Little Pony number 42. But before I begin, I need to get something pretty heavy off of my chest. My Little Pony lately has left me feeling a bit dejected. No Second Prances was not a very good episode, due to our main character Twilight Sparkle caring more about a dinner to stroke her ego than her student. Newbie Dash was even worse, containing some series tropes, and especially due to that cringing, unwatchable part where Dash starts acting like each one of her friends. Plus, the drama of Hasbro placing a manual copyright claim on my blind reaction video to No Second Prances that I'm still disputing with zero response so far. We've had several comics in the last few months alone be mediocre, with the last one being downright awful due to the terrible artwork and outright murder of a sentient creature in a very contrived way. Behind the scenes, the last comic was made worse, since Comixology's archive PDF file was missing all the pages after page 15, causing additional work to get the last remaining pages. And working on these comic reviews now takes up all of my free time for the day, so by the time I'm done, I need to go to bed for work tomorrow. All work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. And today started off just as bad. I'm normally able to get a few things done in the morning before work after reading the comic. Download and convert the archive PDF from Comixology into a usable format. Write my YouTube video description using the Comixology entry and the numerous links on Equestria Daily. But both of those steps had to be delayed since the links on EQD were to Friends Forever 27 for some reason. And the PDF only had 5 of its 23 pages. While both of these problems got fixed, it still caused delay for someone that likes to get his review out as quickly as possible, preferably on the same day as the comic's release. Stack on top of this, a lot of things happening in my personal life that need my priority attention, and you'll realize why I'm doing something today. This is my last episode of Critical Analysis. I may bring the character back once in a while to do something special, but this is my last regular episode of Critical Analysis. But with that said, let's look at the cover. The main cover is just a mess with the thoughts going through Pinkie Pie's mind. Worst of all, it only has half to do with the story. I'll elaborate more on that later. Our story begins when Pinkie Pie rushes to Rarity because she wanted to get an extra special friend an extra special present, who later turns out to be Rarity. Whoa, 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 what? It's not a spoiler if it's obvious. Pinkie Pie wants to replace the copy of Rarity's favorite book, The Princess's New Dress, essentially the Emperor's New Clothes, that Sweetie Belle had destroyed when she tried to get her cutie mark in thermodynamics. Instead of going to the same bookstore where every pony gets their new issue of Daring Do and just buying a new one, Rarity suggests making the book from scratch and offers to help. Oh, now you think of that, Rarity. Where was that idea in A Gift for Mod Pie? Alright, ignoring Season 6. However, during the course of making the book, Pinkie Pie keeps trying to change the art style and the story to Rarity's utter annoyance. But eventually, they finish making the book, and Pinkie Pie gives it to Rarity, who is happy with her gift. And so our comic ends with Pinkie and Rarity discussing to go buy BFF smoothies. I heard that this story has some similar elements to an upcoming episode of the show, but that's season 6 stuff and we're ignoring that. We also don't need to go over the story of the Emperor's new clothes. But overall, this comic isn't too bad. I will admit that Pinkie Pie is way too ADHD in this comic, almost annoyingly so. But it is humorous in places, especially when she's using a box of Breckle brand color markers, named after the MLP colorist of the same name. Speaking of the art, I'm okay with it here as opposed to in My Little Pony number 41, in that the constantly changing art style had no rhyme or reason. But here, the changes in art style were only limited to the book. Pinkie Pie and Rarity in her room remain consistent throughout. But speaking of these two ponies, I do have one big gripe with this comic. This story is about Pinkie Pie and Rarity. None of the covers, not even any of the variant covers, reflect this at all, keeping Pinkie Pie as the main focus. And because this comic features two characters, it should have been a Friends Forever comic. There was no need to waste a main series comic on this, and it would have worked considering that Rarity and Pinkie have never crossed in that series. Overall, this wasn't a bad comic, and it's a decent one for me to go out on. It's nowhere close to my all-time favorite comic, My Little Pony Marker Series number 10 featuring Luna, but at least I'm going out on a good note rather than a bad one. And you can find this comic both digitally and physically using the links in the description below. 
hey, thanks for watching! I do more than just comic reviews, so why not click that bottom video to go watch Cyber Angel Plays, where I play various video games. Or click on that top video to go watch my last review. And remember to click that like button and share on social medias if you enjoyed the episode, leave a comment below to help me improve the show in the future, and to subscribe to keep up to date on all of my latest videos. I'm Critical Analysis, signing out.